I'm going to show you how to construct your own template for doing a tabbed flyer so you have control over how many tabs there are or if you have a creative idea of how those tabs are going to be used you've got a little more ability to affect where they go. So create a new file, go to file, choose new and under US paper presets there is a letter preset and that should put you right at eight and a half by eleven at three hundred pixels per inch color mode CMYK click OK. Let's begin by figuring out where the tabs are going to go. I do this by creating a new layer grabbing my rectangular marquee tool setting the feather to zero and then creating a shape that's about the size of the tab I want to end up with. And I fill that with color. I've got my black as my main color. I'm going to hit Option Delete and then Command D to deselect. At this point you will grab your Move tool and place it in the bottom left corner. Zoom in a little bit. So we're going to duplicate this layer and copy it across. There's multiple ways you can do that, but I'm going to simply hold down Command and Option, which will turn your cursor into a double arrow. And then when you click and start dragging, also hold down Shift, and that will keep those in a nice row. Once you reach the edge of your object, see how mine is kind of popping over? If yours isn't doing that, I would recommend turning on the Snap feature under View because we want it to snap right to the edge of that. And then you want to move it away so there's a little bit of space between it. So I'm just going to hold command and use my right arrow key maybe twice to put just a tiny bit of space between there. Now that I have two with perfect spacing between them, I can select both of those layers, hold down command option again, and click and drag and do the same thing. So I'm pulling it over to those edges meet up and then holding command and pushing the right arrow key a couple times. I'm just going to do that a couple more times here. And now we're down to the end where I need to decide are these tabs wide enough or do they need to be narrower or wider? If they need to be wider, I'll only copy one more. If they need to be narrower, I'll copy two more. And I think they're kind of wide, so I'm going to copy two more. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So now I have tabs, but they're not equally spaced across the bottom. And instead of crunching numbers, the way I make this work out is by selecting my top layer, hold shift, grab my bottom layer, and then transform, command T. Grab the handlebar on the right and just bring it into the edge of the paper and hit enter. Now you have a visual marker for exactly where these lines that will show where to tear or cut your tabs will go. Let's just flatten all of those together by right clicking and choosing merge layers. And I'm going to set this to about 10% opacity so we can see the lines that we're about to create. To create the lines, I like to use my pen tool and set it to shape, fill to zero, and stroke to a solid color. I'm going to begin with a two point line and then choose the style that you would like it, whether it's dashed lines or dotted lines. You can always change this later, which is the beauty of doing it with a pen tool. So to set your first pen tool, go to this first dividing line, click once, hold shift, and click at the bottom. That will make a perfectly vertical line along there. Hit, or let's see, let's hold down command and click once to get off of that path. Now that I have my line in place, I'm going to zoom in and hold command and nudge it so that it's perfectly over that. And I need one, two, three, 
four, five, six more lines. So I'm going to make six copies really quickly by holding down Command and pushing J. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Should give me seven altogether. This last one that I copied, I'm going to grab my Move tool and drag it all the way over here to the right to the last line that's showing and command arrow it, nudge it into place. So now I have two lines. Well if we did our spacing correctly you should be able to select all of your line layers over here, grab your move tool and click the equally distribute button or distribute horizontal centers. Now that we have those where we need them, we actually don't need this layer anymore, so you can get rid of it. And it is up to you if you'd like to put a capping line over these. You don't have to, but I think it looks a little more tidy, so I'm going to. So I've grabbed my pen tool, it still has all the same settings. I'm going to click once on the left, hold shift, and click once on the right. And then command, click off. If I need to move it, I can come in, hold command, and arrow key up a couple times to nudge it. So these are my tab lines, and I can change their um, characteristics at any time by selecting all of the layers, grabbing my pen tool, make sure it's set to shape so I have my fill and stroke options, and I can figure out what color I want, how heavy that should be, or even what style it should be. Your choice. Once you have everything settled the way you want, I would suggest adding these all into a group folder to keep things organized. If you have all your layers still highlighted, just simply hold shift and click on the new folder button. That will create a group. I'm going to name these lines dash OK to print. Now that we have our lines figured out, let's take a look at safe text areas. You need your rulers turned on for this, so go to view and turn on your rulers. And then right click on your ruler and make sure it's set to inches. An 8.5 by 11 area should have a safe text zone of about a quarter inch. So I'm going to add guidelines indicating that quarter inch by clicking on one ruler and dragging over to a quarter inch on the side, on the top, from the right, and instead of doing this from the very bottom I'll do it from this bottom line because potentially all of those tabs might be pulled off and then I'm left with just a square of paper. Inside this area is the safe text zone, so any of your small informative text should not go outside of that line. You'll notice that your lines do come down over your, um, or your guidelines come down over your lines. If that bothers you, a really simple fix is to create a template layer grab your marquee tool and select that area inside the safe text zone and fill it with a color to indicate your safe text area and then you can either clear your guidelines or simply turn them off by going to view and choose show guides command semicolon so that's the safe text area for our main area of the flyer what about the tabs? The spacing on a tab is more similar to that of a business card because it's a small area. We would need a safe text zone that's probably about an eighth of an inch in from each of the lines for each of these little areas. So instead of setting up, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Instead of setting up eight separate pieces, what I want to do is create one tab and then have the ability to copy it multiple times and that way when I uh, update one of them it'll update all of them if I create it as smart objects. So here's how to go about doing that. First off, I would create what I want to go in one of these and if it's helpful, 
to rotate your image while you're doing this, you can um, go up to image, choose image rotation, and then 90 degrees counterclockwise. For right now, I'm just going to set up kind of a placeholder area that, say, this would be my graphic, and I'm kind of eyeballing that this doesn't go all the way to both edges. And then my text. Usually you would follow the same sort of setup that you had on the big main flyer. So the fonts that you used for the headline do the same on your little tiny tab. And then in this case, um, we'll want to change the font to something else. And font size could be about a 9. It's useful to consult some uh, type size suggestions. So information, this is just kind of my filler copy. This little tab, you want to pay attention with your uh, design of no, principles of design rules, such as contrast, proximity, repetition, um, and alignment. It's a small area, but the information will be a lot easier to understand if it's been formatted so that visually it makes sense. So here I have a bunch of filler stuff and I want to make multiple copies. The best way to do this is to select the layers that you've just made. So here's all my information layers. And then right click on them in your layer panel and choose Convert to Smart Object, which will change that layer so that it has a thumbnail with a little icon on it. I would then take this new smart layer and copy it through the rest of these. Now if I have my spacing done correctly, I should be able to do this exactly the same as I've done everything else. So I'm going to make um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more copies. So Command J seven times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then drag that last one all the way down and position it so that it looks really centered in this last box. Then you'll grab all of those layers in your Layers panel, get your Move tool, and use that Distribute option again, except this time instead of horizontal centers, we're going to do vertical centers. And that should plop those right smack in the middle, and if they didn't, you can always go back in and kind of move them just a little bit. You do want these to be lined up neatly so that if you pull out a guideline, all the information shares a line. Okay, but what if you wanted to change these? Now here's the beauty of using a smart object, is I don't have to change each one of these. All I have to change is one. To do that, you need to double click on the thumbnail. This will show up, you can say OK. And then here's your information. You'll notice it has a transparent background, and for me that's kind of hard to see what's going on, so I like to make a new layer and fill it with white and put it at the bottom. And this is temporary, I'll actually turn that one off before I'm done. But at this point, you could change your graphics, your information, anything that you wanted to. Hide that solid layer, save it, Command S, close the window, Command W, and it will have updated all that information across each one of those objects. Let's pop back to the example. Now you can see that there's not just a white frame of space around each one of these. They have a shared graphic in the background that goes from top to bottom to both sides, and that gives it some continuity and makes it less blocky or choppy. 
Once you've got everything set up the way that you want it to, you can save this as a Photoshop file template. I like to typically take a last look at my layers and make sure everything is organized. So here I've got my lines. Um, change that back to green. Here I have my lines in a folder. I'm going to take all of my smart information and put it in a folder. And then my template information, I'm going to do a couple of things to that. I'm going to name it template info don't print. And then I'll right click on the layer and choose red and lock it. This is my default setup for things that should not print. So make sure you turn that layer off before you save off your final file. And now this is ready to save as a Photoshop template that you can come in and edit any way you want.